This is the Dental Up Podcast, your daily source for insights from dentists and leaders in the industry. Brought to you by Keating Dental Lab, a full-service, award-winning dental lab that is here to add value to your dental practice. With high-quality restorations, friendly, reliable service, the best products, and prices, come experience the Keating difference. Visit KeatingDentalLab.com for details. Good morning and welcome back to the Dental Lab Podcast. I'm Bob Brandon, your host and the general manager here at Keating Dental Lab. Today's guest is one of my personal favorite dentists. We were introduced to each other about 18 years ago, and I still remember Dr. Collarin's first case, and it was it was a doozy. We'll get into that later, but please join me in welcoming to the Dental Lab Podcast from San Luis Obispo, California, Dr. Michael Collarin. Dr. Collarin, good morning. Good morning. It's been 18 years. <laughs> it, it has, yeah. I know, it goes by fast, doesn't it? Goals. <laughs> yeah. So, again, I can't thank you enough for your loyalty and support these past 18 years. It's been phenomenal. I've been fortunate enough to see how you've been able to recreate function and establish occlusion on a lot of your cases. I'm a big fan of your work, and your scans are phenomenal. Love it. And I know your work in the field of laser dentistry is also tremendous. And that helps us a lot with defining clear margins on your scans. Thank you for all that. Thank you for your loyalty. Thank you for your business and your continued support. Great. Yeah, well, I've gone through in 18 years, but got to be at least a couple miles of margins for sure. <laughs> right. So let's go back to the beginning. Tell us where you went to dental school and when you graduated and what your first job out of school was like. Went to ULP, graduated in 96. Got out and was ready to conquer the world. And then the world caught me on the head and I realized I need to learn a lot more. But I worked in a a mill, potentially. And I won't say the name, but it was uh, West. And they did a lot of sales jobs and stuff like that. So I was with them okay. maybe three weeks before I found somebody new. And then I worked for a agency that actually put me in different practices for a couple months. And then I found a guy who was looking for an associate and we worked out together and everything was great. And we worked together for almost six years. Then you took over, you bought him out and he retired or working, maybe not. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was working part-time with his associate and had my own practice, but it was a small practice. I had bought it for very little because the guy was working two days a week part-time. So I was building that app and thinking I would eventually just go my own way. But he said, I'd like to retire here, not too far off. So maybe we have to start working towards uh, that. So I thought, great. This is a great practice. It was growing and had a lot of great personnel, very stable patient population. So I went ahead and sold my practice. I had doubled it in the time that I had it. it oh, wow. About three oh, years. Course. Good job. And, but it was not much of anything. It was pretty easy to double. <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah that, that's true. That's the way math works. Huh? <laughs> exactly. So bad. And then worked for him full time and we were doing great. And then he found out that he had a loan that he could not pay off all at once without having to pay a huge penalty. Uh -oh. And he didn't want to do that. And I didn't want to stay an associate. So. That's when I started looking and we decided to take a look around San Luis Obispo again and found a practice that was up for sale and then 9-11 hit and we sat waiting for finances to return, which they slowly did. And so it took almost a year and a half to get the practice, but finally did. And it's been, for the most part, really good sailing ever since. Yeah, you've had consistent growth with us. That doesn't happen by accident. You've had a very strong business plan, a great business acumen, and you've made it happen. And St. Louis Obispo is a great community. I love it. I love the Central Coast. <laughs> Anytime we can, the rat race down here in Southern California and LA, I, I love getting up to the, what I feel is a nice, peaceful environment that you're in. It's always nice to live where you want a vacation. Very cool. Tell us about the 
evolution of your practice, how you've incorporated new technology, new systems you've developed, and tell us how you've grown. Things have changed since I was in school. When I was in school, we saw the first digital x-ray sensor, and it was really cool, but it was really clunky. And so it was like, well, that'll be something that'll hopefully get a lot faster and better. And <laughs> it has <laughs> getting, getting better. I remember hearing a couple lectures about lasers coming into dentist and I thought, well, that sounds pretty cool because the cutting edge and everybody thinks very highly of them. There's not no really downside to lasers. And then there were for the early scanners and mills about, and all of that has occurred since I got out of school and have to either jump on the wagon or get run over by the crowd behind it. So I decided to run into the lasers first and I did it backwards. There was a guy who had a really small practice actually down there in Anaheim and it was so small, his operatories were not big enough to fit the laser that he had in the operatory. So he had the laser out in the hallway and was trying to do work with the laser. And it was like, uh, yeah, I can see your problem here. <laughs> anyway, he said, just take over the lease payments and you know, it's yours. And it was like, that's pretty affordable. And I drove down one weekend, picked it up and brought it home and started lasering and realized I knew virtually nothing about lasering and talked to the manufacturer on it. They do some of the training with their reps and in order to have a rep drop by, you had to buy a laser from them. So, oh no. So I got a hold of some other, but you gotta love technology. So I got through, got a hold of a couple other laser users through downtown and through the interest on there and got some ideas on new things to use it because it really didn't have, they made a laser and said, here, use it in dentistry, but they didn't have protocols set at the time. But it was really fairly new in the laser world. That was in front of the bleeding edge, which made it a little uncomfortable at times, but it was cover something. Started to learn about perio in lasers and the applications there and Got another laser to do that and then found out that laser doesn't do very well with perio a couple of years to finally got to a, you can't do perio with lasers and one of those people perio and just on the wrong end of the argument and that uh, he had a really amazing product that had a protocol that actually was down on paper to use. And I've been with that with them for 16 years. I think it's been, I teach the protocol and have a great success with it. It's perfectly it's, fine to name names here. I'm not, oh, we're not try, right? yeah, we're not trying to hide anything from anybody. <laughs> Why don't you tell us yeah. the company that, you know, really got you on the right track with it and now how you have given back and how you help them. Yeah, the company was that the owner in the company was called Millennium Technology, and they had opportunities to teach. So once I got the laser, it was a natural thing to look at. Wow, I'm learning this, and maybe I should look at helping out to eat. Been teaching the app protocol, it seems names because we couldn't claim certain things, but it finally got to the point where it's very well known as Lenap and been using it with my patients and they love it. They love being able to save their teeth. That's truly a life-changing procedure for people. And it is so common in, in the dental terminology. Now everybody knows what it is and to be able to step in, I know you're a restorative dentist, but part of it, a big part of dentistry is just saving what the patient has. And it's a phenomenal application of lasers in dentistry. You have a, a quad of perio surgery done and have them come out with better attachment, more bone, way better health. And now their immune system isn't fighting off an infection that they've been having to fight off for a long time. Suddenly, once they realize, oh, I'm going to keep my teeth, then they want them to look good. They want them to function. That steps into all the other things that we do with 
backgrounds in bridge and ortho and whitening and cosmetics and things like that. So it's a really good service for the patient because they're able to now keep their teeth and know that they can be. Absolutely. What better way to demonstrate to the patient that you really care, you're a healer than to help them save something instead of saying, sorry, Mrs. Jones, this tooth's a goner. We've got to extract it and put in an implant. You've become a healer. You've healed their infection and their condition and helping them save their teeth, which is wonderful. Yeah, it's a really good service for the patient. Definitely. Yeah. And I've been a big fan of Millennium Dental Technologies and your teaching. I know you come down here to Southern California quite a bit and pop into the lab when you have some free time which I know isn't much, but it's a great company and their protocol works if you follow it. It's great. So Dr. Cullerin, going back 18 years ago, we were introduced to you. Actually, you found Sean on Dentaltown and it was a very unique situation with a one, a wonderful service again that you stepped in and helped this young man. Why don't you tell us about how you came to know Keating Dental Lab and, and tell us about the very first case that you ever did with us. I remember the impressions and pouring the models and everything like that. And it's one of those that is really going to stick with me for a long time. And tell us how you came to know Keating Dental. We were Keating Dental Arts back then, but how you found Sean Keating and how we started off this relationship. Yeah, it was, again, one of the things I'm good at is finding a backwards way in, but I had a patient who had gastroesophageal reflux disease really severely or GERD and his teeth, because of the acid, had been worn down pretty severely in a couple of little cases. He was basically down to the gum line and really nice guy. Didn't have the money to do the whole thing, wanted to help him out. I wrote a series of letters to his insurance company because it was a union situation. There was a chance that they could help out with it because it was because of his medical condition. And they basically said no. And I had posted the um, case on Belltown. And I can't remember what the reason was, but anyway, I had put it on there and explained his situation. Brian also happened to be a paraplegic from a accident that he had as a child where he fell out of a tree. And the interesting thing is that the practice that I bought was where his father was when he found out that he had fallen out of the tree. He was actually in the chair and got a call at the front desk saying his son had been taken to the hospital. So, oh my uh, goodness. Oh my so, goodness. <laughs> that long connected way, we still see his parents, his mother still today, but we put that out there and didn't really expect much other just showing the case that I was working on. And I think I was looking for maybe some insurance justification for doing things and Anyway, Sean came on there and I had seen Sean's posts and known that he was a good guy and a character. And I had thought that, and he had sent a message on to the post and said, I could help you out with this. If you're willing to do the work, I can go ahead and do the crowns for you. Probably won't make any money on it, but that's what it was, it was like, somebody's there with the crowns, I can sit down and prep them out. Then one hot August day, I remember we picked the wrong room to do the preps in because I was actually sitting there sweating with drips of sweat dropping almost in patient's mouth. But it got all the preps done, took all the impressions, sent it off, got them into temps, got them mostly stable with the temps. There were still those few teeth that really there was nothing to them that was they were really hard to keep them in camps, but Sean was good enough to get everything taken care of, got it back. I think within two weeks, uh, we went ahead and put everything in and I think I had maybe three or four interproximal adjustments and maybe two or three spots where I had to adjust the occlusion and everything went in and it was like, oh my gosh. My lab can't do this. <laughs> what am I using this? And I didn't have any problems with my lab. I think they had hired a guy who had 
one eye. And I think he was doing the quality control for him. Oh, that's not good. I think he had cataracts too. <laughs> hey, it happens to all of us. <laughs> uh, wait a minute here. Yeah. So anyway, got him set up and fixed up and he was so grateful. And he actually ended up taking a visit down there and seeing you guys. I remember that that completed, that really completed the story for us is seeing, meeting you for the first time and meeting your patient in that, uh, yeah, we were in the old lab in those days, but man, that to us seeing his smile and just hearing how appreciative he was, that was gold for us that completed yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. He was a great company. Unfortunately, it was maybe five years later that it thought that he had kind of Went a muscle and was having some pain in his chest. And because of his paraplegia, he just thought that maybe transferring from the chair was causing this, but he ended up having a heart attack and wasn't able to get the chair soon enough oh. and ended up passing away. Oh, I don't want to hear that. I wanted a happy ending. I don't want to hear that. Oh, goodness. But. Well, I remember the first case and I remember going to Sean, really? We're going to, we don't even, we don't even know Dr. Collar and <laughs> what you described my boss as, as a good guy and a character. And I always throw in another one there, a heart of gold where, oh yeah, you know, he will help anybody. It doesn't matter, you know, what the situation is. Sean always helps first and then figures out a way that we're going to make it happen and pay for it later. But. Yeah, that I'm so happy that we had the great yeah. fortune to meet Brian and to meet you that that day. And I'm glad he got five years out of it. Uh, yeah, you know, and it, I would have hoped for more, but that's okay. Yeah, his family was so grateful. And one of the things that people said at his funeral was his smile. Everybody Aww. just loved seeing that. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, let's okay. We talked a lot. We talked a lot about technology with yeah. your lasers, but can you tell us how you've incorporated scanners into your daily practice? Scanners have been another fun one. They've been evolving and they evolved over time. And my first scanner was from 3M. It was there. No, the one before. Oh, okay. That let and die. <laughs> and they went and did it again too. Exactly. Yeah. So I can't remember the name of it. I think I've got parts of it out in the garage because the video card on it was really nice. But I started with that and it actually had some 3D glasses that came with it. And it Oh, I do remember that. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> had little whip on covers over the lens, the little plastic baggy type ones. And those things fit and they never, I never had a problem with fit or margins having a problem. And so I realized that, okay, scanners are here. This is the way to go. We, the old way of doing it was just not accurate enough and the poop and the smell and the taste for the patient, this was not the way to be there anyway. And so we worked with them. Over the four or five years that they supported that. And then they said, oh, you can buy one of our new ones and we'll give you a little bit of a discount. But that was that one. And 3M really has not had large equipment that they've sold dentists. It's always been small, either disposables or girls that you use intra oily, but nothing that was a actual piece of equipment that would be durable and hang around. And they're still working it out. They're great people, but it's hard when you have one technology and you know, you've got a better one and how do you switch over? And I, it's a shift in business model too. I make great impression material. It's still my favorite impression material, great cements too, but yep. yeah, the whole thing with technology and training and it support. Yeah. That's a entirely different business model for them. Yeah. By the time you purchase something, it's like at least. A year or two behind the latest, and then you're three years into it, and uh, they've doubled the speed, they increased the resolution by 40% or whatever. And so it's the way technology works, but it's good because it, it helps us. There's so much more out there now than when I started looking even at them back in the early 2000s, but 
scanning is the way to go. I will never look back. I think we have a little bit of alginate left over and we use some polyvinyl as a bite registration, I think, every once in a while. But that's about it. <laughs> yeah, what you're describing is the foundation or the building block of digital dentistry. And the technology obviously was there. Maybe the business model wasn't. Now we've got a, easily a dozen players in the market now. Right. So tell us what you've moved on to now, because I do this quite a bit. Yeah. So where I'm at here, we do a fair amount of Invisalign, which is the other side of it. But the Itera, we've got the latest one. What are they calling it? Five something the i think is it the element five D element or five something? yeah and then we have the one before that that was the five the itero five maybe or they didn't have any extra stuff on the end of the name of it but we have two of them we do some scanning and hygiene we're trying to get it so that we can scan every new patient and it's amazing the technology and the preciseness and the ability Pick something that's 3D and copy it 3D right there within minutes. And it's something that I don't think I'd ever stop doing as long as I'm doing dentistry, for sure. It's changed the way clinicians practice and it's changed the way that laboratories do their business as well. And it's not only here to stay, it's if you're not into it now. You, you got to, because you're just going to get further left behind. It's the gorilla in the room now, and we all have to pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. The so, one thing with scanning and all of that is the, I know that most of that stays in the virtual environment until it really starts milling and then there's no model until I request printing. But that's one of the things that I still, it's one of my security blankets is having a model. I, I think I'm going to keep requesting models, even though they can come out and be exactly the same as they are. I. Got to have some physical. Yeah. And you're not alone in that. Still, the majority of our digital customers do want some type of model. Some want what's called a check model, which is the prep and half of an adjacent tooth on either side. Some want only quarter model. Some want a full die model. And again, it's dentists want to be able to put the crown on the model, put the crown on the mouth and compare. And if there is an issue, then we can go back and trace what happened. You're not alone in that. Dentists work with their hands and love models and we understand that and it's all good. And we've always had models to play with and now we don't get to play in the mud, so we've got to do something. <laughs> <laughs> we've never had to do this for you, but we've sent some dies and models back to customers that don't have enough axial wall reduction and the margins are undercut and we'll mill a crown on their native die and then we'll do a reduction coping on the prep and we'll make another die and a crown. And once they see that, it's, oh yeah, this fits a lot better. <laughs> so. Yeah. It's yeah. just, it's just a little teaching tool that we use sometimes here. For sure. Definitely. Yeah. But I don't I've think we've, it. I've never done that on one of your cases though. No, no, I've had a few, but there were a few even I've done and it's all oh, son of a gun. That looks tall. And so this is the end of the piece. So I'll put a note in there. Yep. Set a reduction coping if there's not enough room and there are enough you guys allowed to have lots of room. So, uh, every time I've said that you guys put them right off and that's great if it's what's needed to make sure the crown is going to last a long time then that's what's got to be done yeah i don't think a ceramic has ever said there's too much room <laughs> <laughs> yeah the man said the actual walls are sure short they're, they're going to be bonding this right yeah <laughs> yeah so tell us what is it like working with keating dental lab if you can just summarize real quickly for us? I think I can summarize it by talking about the last lab and even labs before that I've used. There was always a day of, let's see, you go in there, you take a look at the models, and it looks okay. And I think that's an 83, five or was, and put it in a mouth and then it looks like it was made for somebody else for sure. Cause the customer all rounded off and all the others that they've got are high peaks. But when I go to do a hitting crown, all that stress is gone because I've done so many of them that I know that there's really going to be, what is my remake 
rate anyway. I've got to be down. Yeah, let me. I've stopped <laughs> even looking at that page of your account, to be honest. I can't. Let's see I, here. I've got to have a world record because I, I think I send maybe one or two a year. And it, it's that stress of getting yeah. that crown in and knowing that it's going to do it and knowing we're going to be at the chain that we requested and that everything's going to work out with it 99.9% .9 of the time. Yeah. I'm on the page right now. 0.03%. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's, what, that's about what I figured it was. Yeah. yeah. That's wonderful. And it's been 18 years of cases. So it's yeah. not like we have a small sample size. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, thank you for that. And I want to finish up with, you've been doing this a long time. You've been in the trenches and people's mouths and everything. What kind of advice would you give to a dentist that's going to graduate from dental school this coming spring? They tell you when you leave dental school that you're out and you're ready and you can do dentistry. But basically, you're really just a safe, you're not going to kill the patient beginner. Or and you've learned some basic skills. Your hands are getting better, but they've got a long way to go. But get out there and learn because there's so much more beyond what they can do in four years of dental school that needs to be learned before you can really get the diagnostic skills and be able to take a look at a person's mouth and say, oh, we got this and this and do that all within about 10 or 15 seconds and know how you're going to take that case uh, in a slightly different direction because of the things that you've noted because of what you know. And if you're new, there's stuff that you can share that new that that we haven't heard about research and stuff like that, but go out there and learn some of the stuff that all of us old geezers have been doing for years and years and found ways to make things efficient and, and overall profitable. That's great advice and can't teach experience. You just have to get out there and do it. <laughs> experience perks. I think it it does, but we've all been there. We've all had to learn from our mistakes. I learned a couple of valuable ones this week. As long as you're a lifelong learner, it's exactly. a good thing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, you've never stopped learning. There's always something as, oh, what are you doing there? How did that happen? Gosh, that's great. How do you do that? So, yeah. Dr. Collar, and thank you. Thank you so much for your time, your kindness, your generosity your loyalty and support all these years. It was great hearing how you evolved. And we've spoken thousands of times over the years, okay. but uh, it's great actually just hearing in your own words, how, how you started and how you came to be the wonderful Dr. Michael Collar. And I don't, I'm not just using, I'm not just using that term. I really mean it because you're a great dentist, a great clinician, but also to me personally, you've been a friend and a mentor. And you're a wonderful person and a wonderful human being. And I thank you for all of that. It being is a great company to be with. And the experience that I've had with pretty much everybody that I've ever had to talk to you has been great. And there's always that cooperation that we need to get this done in the best way so that it's going to be the best thing for the patient and eating is it's a wonderful place to be able to send all of that stuff and have it come back in a way that I'm really pleased with it. Yeah. And Sean tells us all the time, we work for the patient. We work with you guys, Dennis. All of us are really working with the patient. And if the patient's not happy, they're going to tell you about it. And right. you're going to tell <laughs> us about it. It's just, hey, we all have to work in the best interest of the patient. And you guys don't have anybody to go home to beat on except for maybe the dog. It stops with you guys. <laughs> Yeah, I have a healthy uh, bar collection at home. <laughs> there we go. Right, yeah. Dr. Collar, and thank you again for everything you've done. I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, hope it doesn't snow too much in yeah. <laughs> San Luis Obispo <laughs> this weekend. I think yeah, hopefully, hopefully not down there either. I just had a blizzard warning for San Diego. Like, yeah, it was crazy. My wife's there now for a physical oh, therapy man. convention, and she's like, I don't see any snow. Yeah, and then he shows up, and you're like, what? All right. Awesome. We'll talk to you soon. Absolutely. Be well. Thank you so much. All right. You too. Thank you for listening to the Dental Up podcast, your daily source for insights from dentists and leaders in the industry. 
This episode is sponsored by Keating Dental Lab, here to add value to your dental practice. With high quality restorations, friendly, reliable service, the best products and prices, come experience the Keating difference. Visit KeatingDentalLab.com for details.